Hi everybody, it's time for Sunday School. This one's for Sunday, September 20th in the year 2020. We're gonna be talking about Matthew 20 in a couple of minutes, but I have to tell you, I've been struggling with this video. I have started it, I think this is the fifth time. I was stumbling over my words. I couldn't get my seat in the place that I wanted it. There's a guy riding up and down outside our house on the road on this little tiny bike and it makes lots of noise and I've just struggled and I just wanted to tell you that that sometimes when it looks like someone else has it all together they don't really they're doing crazy things and trying to get themselves put back together and that's the kind of afternoon I'm having today and we all have those sometimes and it just seems like we can't get ourselves settled down. So this time, if you don't mind, I'd like to start with a prayer in addition to ending our time with a prayer. So pray with me. Father, we just thank you for this time together ask, and we ask that you bless it. I ask that you calm my spirit as I give these kids the lesson from your word. God, we love you so much. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Thanks. Prayer always helps me to settle my spirit down. God is so faithful to do that for us. So we're, like I said, we're going to work out of Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16 today. And I'm going to read it first to you. This is from the English Standard Version. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and again about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work in the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same I gave to you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. So I want you to think about that for a minute. You know, if I were one of those workers, I think I'd be upset too if I worked all day and the ones that came at the end um, got the same amount of money. <clears throat> so he says, Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is like a man who owns a vineyard. Um, do, you, do you know what a vineyard is? No, it's a place where people grow grapes and eventually they make wine out of that. And there's always work to do in a vineyard. So the man that owned this vineyard really needed some workers. Um, so he agreed, he went out and found those early workers and they agreed to work for a denarius. Now in that time, in Jesus time, a denarius was about the amount of money that you would pay someone for an entire day of work. So that group went and began working and they, they might've been um, hoeing the garden to take out the weeds between, they might've been picking grapes, 
They might have been pruning back the vines. I don't know, there's lots and lots of work that would need to be done in a vineyard. So that was probably, I don't know, six or seven o'clock maybe, early in the morning. So then again, you heard the, the scripture that I read to you. He went out, the owner went out again at nine o'clock and found some people that weren't doing anything. And so he hired them too. So they came in and he told him he'd pay them fairly. Um, didn't tell him he would pay exactly like he did the first group. He just said he would pay them whatever was right. And so I'm sure they probably thought they were going to get a little less than those beginning workers, but they wanted to make some money and they wanted to work for him. So they went and worked. So then he did that again three hours later at 12 and again at three. And then he went out again at five. And each time the people that he approached and said, do you want to work for me? They said, yes. And I'm sure, like I said earlier, I think they probably thought, hmm, I probably won't get a whole denarius because I'm not working a whole day, but I'll go and work. I'm not making any money right now. So making a little bit of money is a good thing, right? So the typical work day at that time went from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. That was a long work day. Um, what the landowner did at five o'clock was amazing because um, there was only one hour left to work in the day. And so he went out at five o'clock and found those other workers. Um, and he was surprised that they were just standing around and they answered him, if you remember, they said, well, nobody's hired us. So he told them to go work in there in his vineyard and they agreed. Um, even though there was only one hour left, they knew they'd get a little bit of money for that work. So as we think about the parable that Jesus told up to this point, let's use our imaginations and think what it was like to work in the vineyard during that time. To help us understand, let's think about how we would feel. So suppose you share your room with your brother or your sister. Your room's a disaster. Clothes and books and toys and paper that you didn't put in the trash. Things are everywhere. Your mom says, clean up your room. And when you clean it up, well, I'll take you to your favorite restaurant and you can eat whatever you want on the menu. Well, that's a pretty good deal. You agree to clean up the room and start thinking about where you'd like to eat and what you'd like to get there. And and as you pick up your brother or sister's dirty clothes and put them in the hamper, you think, well, why are they not here helping me? They're downstairs in the kitchen working on a school project that they had to finish first. And you work hard for two hours to get your room ready, but when you're almost done, your brother or sister comes in to help you. And they help you for about 15 minutes, and then your room's perfect. You worked for a couple of hours, brother and sister only worked for about 15 minutes. So if we go back to Jesus parable to his words, we will see how the workers felt that had worked all day, how they felt about the workers that came later. So let's look at verse eight again, and I'm going to pull that up so I can read it to you. Verse eight said, when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. So he called all the workers together. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> and so, okay, so he got all the workers together. He told um, his foreman, who's one of the men in charge, to pay the workers. And the people that started working at five o'clock got paid first. And then they got paid the same amount as the people who started work at six o'clock in the morning. And those guys went last. So everybody watched that foreman handing the people that worked at five o'clock, that denarius, that full day's wage. Next, the three o'clock people got the same amount and the noon people, the 12 o'clock people, got the same amount and the 9 a.m. people got the same amount and the 6 a.m. people got the same amount. Everybody got a day's wage, whether they worked 12 hours 
or nine hours or six hours or three hours or even just an hour. So I am sure that those 6 a.m. people would feel like you did if you had cleaned your room for two hours and then your brother or sister came in and helped for 15 minutes and you both were gonna get the same thing. But you know, he was the landowner that was giving out this money and he had the right to give each group of workers whatever he saw fit. So when you go to the restaurant with your brother or your sister and your mom, and she buys both of you anything that you want on the menu at that restaurant, I'm sure you might've been mad, but your mom gets to make that decision. You might think, well, that's not fair. And I'm sure those workers were thinking, that's not fair. Jesus told this, this story because he wanted his disciples to understand that God is fair in how he treats each one of us. <clears throat> he ended his parable by saying, so the last will be first and the first will be last. Jesus knew that the disciples might be tempted to really be proud of their work in him and they might feel like the laborers in the vineyard who had worked all day. So the parable was really to teach the disciples that God doesn't treat those people better who have worked longer for him than those who started later. He sees them as equally important in his kingdom. So knowing that should keep all of his believers to keep to um, not be prideful in how long or how great they believe their work is for him. Just as Jesus taught his disciples that salvation is a gift from God to anyone who accepts it, he also wanted them to know that each person who works in his kingdom will be rewarded in the way that God chooses. Our salvation is a gift from God. And remember, we've talked about this. We can't do anything to earn it. And so that should keep us from bragging about it. The same is true about our service for God. Serving God is a gift and we want to serve him faithfully, not thinking we're gonna get some great reward or not thinking that we're more important than someone else who's serving God in the same way for a shorter time or in a different way. No one earns their place into heaven and no one has the right to, be bra to brag about how long they've been working for God or how much they've been working for God. Each person's work is valuable to God. So we're not gonna do a craft today, but there are three words that I wanna leave you with. And those words are called, commissioned, and compensated. Call. God offers his gift of salvation to all of his people. And I want you to think about um, the fact that, well, let's think about a phone, okay? Think about God calling men and women, boys and girls on a telephone. Well, when we have a phone call, we have a choice. And that choice is to pick it up and answer that call or we can ignore it. So God offers this gift of salvation to everybody in the world, everybody because he created everybody. So he loves us and sent his son so we would be saved. But unless we answer his call and believe it was Jesus who died for us and believe in Jesus by faith, then we can't be saved. So I hope that you'll answer the call. The second word that I used was commissioned. Well, commissioned is kind of a big word, but it means to be given a job to do. So when a person answers God's call to be saved, he then has a job to do, and that's to do the work that God has given to do, them to do. Each of us has a talent and a gift that God has created in us. I'm a teacher. I teach math at Bridgeport High School. I teach Sunday school to you. I was also principal for 13 years. I'm an educator, and that is a gift that God has given me. He's also given me a gift of music 
that I use every Sunday at First Church, playing the piano and also singing. And when I was called by God to be one of his children, when I accepted his salvation, I agreed to use my gifts in service to him. Believers need to begin doing the work God has for them as soon as they accept him into his heart. We don't, none of us know how long we'll be here on earth. But we need to do his work that he's called us to do so we can be part of his kingdom. And the final word is compensated. Compensated is another word for payment. So just like the workers in the field were compensated for their work, believers will be rewarded by God for the work that they do for him in his kingdom. And so I want you to think, are there any of those C words that you need to work on? Do you need to work on the call that God has and you pick up the phone and say, yes, God, I accept your salvation. Do you need to work on the commission that he's given you, the job that he's given you? Maybe you were made to um, call a neighbor. We talked about that. If you'll remember at the beginning of the pandemic back in March and April, is there someone that you needed to reach out to and um, see if you could take them groceries or something like that? Um, is there something you need to do in music? Is there something you need to do to help out the parish house? What kind of work has God given you to do? Maybe it's just to be kind to someone in your class. Well, and then we think about our compensation and I don't think about the things, about getting compensated for the things I do for God, but I know that he's gonna reward me when I get to heaven. You know, one of the greatest things that can happen in a believer's life is when they get to heaven and God reaches down and says, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what I want from him. I wanna do everything I can for him while I'm here on earth. And I hope you'll do the same. Well, just like we opened in prayer tonight, would you close in prayer with me? Father God, we are so grateful for the truth that lies in your word. We're thankful for the scripture in the Bible, for all of your teachings, for all of the parables that Jesus used to show us how you want us to live and show us how you want us to be members of your kingdom. God, help us answer the call. Help us to be obedient to the job you've commissioned us to do and help us to, re to wait expectantly for the compensation that you have for us when we get to heaven to be with you. God, thank you. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you're doing well at school. I, I hope that you're staying safe and following all the guidelines, and I can't wait for the day when we're back together again. I hope you have a wonderful week. You have a good one. I'll see you soon. I love you.